Approval workflows keep businesses running, but managing them manually, well, this quickly becomes a time-consuming hassle. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at how you can create automated approval workflows that fit seamlessly into any internal process, whether that be leave requests, expense reports, or order approvals. Hi there, I'm Alex Knowles from automationhelpers.com, and we help companies like yours get set up and automated using industry-leading portals, apps, and integrations. Now, I want you to think about your current approval process. Maybe it's for purchase orders or expense reports or leave requests, whatever it is, chances are it includes emails flying back and forth, a spreadsheet that you are consistently checking and waiting and waiting for someone to give you the thumbs up. These workflows are repetitive and time consuming. Plus they leave room for error, like missing an email, forgetting to follow up or miscalculating a budget we can use automation tools to take over these repetitive tasks, free up time, streamline our processes, and get more done, flagging issues when we need human oversight. Okay, let's just dive straight into it and show you how you can quickly build automated approval workflows. We'll be using Relay.app as our automation tool and fill out as our form builder for our first example. We will look at other tools available and other examples, but let's focus on this first. An employee wants to take leave. And when they submit this leave request form, a notification needs to be sent to the HR team to review the request. But we also want this to be a simple process so that just a click of a button can approve or reject the request. Now I went ahead and already created a workflow with the trigger event, a new submission from that leave request form. Go ahead and sign up for a Relay.app account if you don't have one already. The free plan is absolutely full chunk full of features and it can get freelancers and individual traders pretty far. So from here, we're going to add a step and select human in the loop. We can select what we want to do. We'll ask to get approval and continue the run. We can then choose how we're gonna send that request. For me, let's go with email. The assignee here is already set. I'm just gonna add a message. Hey, I need you to check this request for leave. Now, the cool thing that we can do is because our form submission actually comes through with the type of leave, we can see here we've got vacation leave is the answer, but it includes sick leave parental leave and some other options is that we can add filters to our workflow and define who receives this request or how many days are docked on which particular amount of days they've got for vacation. Do we dock those or do we dock sick leave? Um, we can do some really cool things here through flow control, adding paths and then setting up rules to determine when each path should be taken. But we'll keep it simple for this example. We're just gonna have the approval. We're not gonna have a due date. Um, we're going to preview this. We've got the send request over, the assignee, that's me. I'll be receiving this. We can preview here by sending it directly to our account. So here we have the email that the reviewer receives. They'll then select open in relay.app, will be redirected and then asked to approve or reject the action step, but we can't show you that because we need to finish setting this up. Now, I will also note that you can't actually set an email address to send off that request email. You must be a member of your Relay.app account. So from here, we'll set the escalation behavior. What happens if this is not approved? Well, we're just going to select so that the behavior of this flow is that end the run if it is not approved, then we'll select done. We can take it further and from here, update our project management solution, whether it's Airtable, SmartSuite, ClickUp, and add a new record so that not only has the reviewer received an email, but they've also now got a task to review the request directly in their account. Let's continue with another example. We'll look at approving a purchase order if the total amount value is higher than 1,000, exceeds 1,000. This time though, we're gonna be using a different tool. We'll use Shopify to receive our orders and we're going to use Zapier as our automation tool. Zapier previously offered Zapier approvals, which had a similar function to Relay.app's human in the loop step. However, as it is no longer accessible, we need a workaround. We can either use a third-party platform and integrate it into Zapier, like GoToHuman or Curator, which 
has that same functionality as human in the loop, or we could break our automated workflow into two automated workflows. Now in Zapier, an automated workflow is called a zap. And in this zap, the trigger event is a new order being received in Shopify. I've then created a filter that determines if the total amount of that order is over 5,000 USD. If it is, we want to ensure that we are compliant and we scrutinize the order, making sure that we aren't overcharging a mistake. So what we'll do is, well, we can't actually use Zapier approvals, which we talked about earlier. And if we search for go to human or curator, we'll notice that there aren't any native connections. What we can do is access the API of one of those tools and then connect Zapier through that means, but we wanna look at the simple and easy processes. So unfortunately with Zapier, it's gonna be a factor of, well, connecting through the API, creating two individual Zaps or using Zapier tables. Now I'll quickly just show you what the second Zap would look like. Firstly, you would have that filter and let's just say you want to track your reviews internally on SmartSuite. Let's say you've got an order review table within SmartSuite. All you'll want to do is create a record and then just ensure that you map over the fields from the order. Let me just quickly select a dummy example table. Then you would just want to ensure that you select what data you were bringing over from the Shopify order. Once you have completed that, you then want to create another zap as I'm just quickly going to show you where the trigger event itself would be from that particular smart suite record being completed. Then from there, you'd want to connect Shopify and set it so that the order is fulfilled. Now I will have to say that within your Shopify website or your Shopify store, ensure that you do not have it set so that when a new order is received, it automatically is fulfilled. I'll leave some info in the description of this video on how to edit that. But let's now take a look at Zapier tables. By setting up your data in Zapier tables, you can manage tasks, requests, and approvals all in the one place. Each row can represent an item waiting for approval and with the addition of button fields, you can trigger actions directly from the table. Be sure to check out this video for more info on Zapier tables. But now let's look at something slightly more involved. Vendor onboarding with compliance checks. Fun stuff. We can automate this process and even flag multiple issues where we need a human oversight. Again, a new tool here. We built an onboarding workflow using Make. Make currently offers a human in the loop enterprise feature, which as the name suggests, is only accessible for those on the enterprise plan. Now, if you don't have the enterprise plan, you'll again have to use something like GoToHuman or Curator. Now, it might look slightly complicated and like there's plenty of paths, but the process is quite simple. The trigger action, a vendor submits their details via a form through fill out. Then automation handles the basics. It checks the vendor's credentials against the database, verifies the budget availability, scans for duplicate entries and cleans it up if found. Then the workflow flags issues and requests approval from a team member if the quote amounts to over 20,000 USD or we find mismatched info, like multiple different tax IDs, for instance. This flags it for review and approval or rejection. We also have multiple teams coming in. So the finance team checks budget concerns and the client manager handles that wrong credentials issue. Then once it's reviewed, that workflow finalizes and the vendor's onboarding workflow continues. If you've watched this and you're eager to begin automating your own approval workflows, just know it's best to start simple. What tasks could you easily automate today? Once you see the benefit, then start to scale up. There are plenty of automation tools like Relay.app and Zapier that are easy for beginners. And then there are other platforms like Pipedream and N8N that allow you to do so much more. So be sure to check those out. If you need help setting up or automating parts of your business, don't hesitate to reach out to us at automationhelpers.com. Our team of experts are offering a free 30-minute consultation, so book yours today.